Hey everybody, Jared Collier here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to cluster keywords for your paid search management. This is a very handy tool. If you're looking for that next level of knowledge, then I would highly suggest you look at Python because you can do a lot of cool things. There's a lot of libraries like machine learning, data analysis that will make you a way smarter paid search manager. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to cluster or group keywords using a machine learning library. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is say import pandas as PD. Pandas is a data analysis library. We're just importing it as PD. So anytime you see PD, that is the pandas library. We're going to import numpy as NP. Anytime you see NP, that's going to stand for NumPy. NumPy is a numerical computing library. And actually, Pandas has that under the hood. Then we're going to say from NLTK.stem import Porter Stemmer. This allows us to basically truncate words down to their root form. And we'll see what this means in a minute here. Then we'll say from NLTK. And by the way, NLTK is a natural language toolkit. Dot corpus import stop words. Stop words are words like to, the, and. These don't have a lot of meaning. When you're grouping keywords, you probably don't want to group by like words like and and I and the, but you might. In some brand names, for example, there are stop words. So we're just going to import this. Then we're going to say from sklearn, that's the machine learning library, dot feature extraction dot text import tfidf vectorizer. So that's going to give us the ability to convert text into numbers. So this will be a matrix or just think of it, if you come from an Excel world, as a table of numbers, where each column has a word, and each row is a keyword. So on the index, or on the left-hand column, you have the keywords, and then the words, and then a count of how many times they appear within that keyword. Then we're going to say from sklearn import cluster, that's the clustering algorithm we're going to use to group keywords. And that's actually not a specific, a specific um, clustering algorithm. That's, that gives us access to multiple. So then we're going to import, or we're going to say, we're going to create an instance of a stemmer equals to porter stemmer. There we go. Now let's run this. I want to show you what stemmer is. If I were to say, stemmer.stem and let's give it a word roofing it truncates it to roof if i were to say roofed it truncates it to roof if i were to say roofers it truncates it to roofer if i were going to say something like accessories a c c e s s o r i e s it's accessory so it has certain rules built in to strip the word down to its root form. And this is really helpful when you think of singular and plural words. You don't want to create, if the keywords are the same, with the only difference being that one word is singular, one word is plural, chances are you want to group those into the same group. That's why we're using this. And so now we have a stemmer instance. We're also going to create the stop words list, so equals stop words dot words and we're going to have an english list so let's take a look at that sw these are the words that we don't really care about so we don't want to create groups that are highly evolving around these words because they don't have a lot of meaning okay now we have everything we need let's create what's called a tokenizer now this is where you'll probably be like, okay, tokenizer, I'm out of here. Chillax, okay? What we're going to do is very simple. You don't even need to understand this particular thing. This is called a function. T 
tokenizer. And in fact, you don't even need this. If you were going to follow this, we could take this out of this tutorial and everything I tell you after here would still work uh, with the exception of not defining a tokenizer. But I want something specific so I can use this stemmer function. So we're going to say keyword. We're going to pass in a keyword into a function. So this is a string. And then we're going to say return. And this is where we get into something called list comprehensions. But we're going to say stemmer, like we did down here with roof, roofer, roofers, accessories. We're going to say stemmer.stem. We're going to pass in the word. I'll call it w. And we say for w in, in what? We're going to take the keyword. We're going to split it. Keyword.split. We're going to split it by a white space. So anytime there's a space between the words, we're going to split it. Now let me give you an example of what this function will actually do. Let's say I was going to say tokenizer, and then it wants a keyword. So we're going to pass in a string here. And that string could be something like, um, let's see here, when to buy houses on desks, desks, I don't even know what I'm saying right now, in lighting. Anyways, we just need some words here. When to buy house, it truncated house, on desks, and it took off the S, in lighting. This is a terrible example, but it gives you an idea of what this, this function here does. It just normalizes it down to its root form. This is going to be very helpful when we have keywords that have a bunch of different, like singular and plural, and also just similarities. Roof, roofer, roofing, roofs, roofed, you know, that kind of thing. Now, those are our keywords here. This is our sample keywords list. You could obviously have thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Now we're going to use TFIDF vectorizer, and that stands for term frequency inverse document frequency. Doesn't matter what it means, you just need to know how to use it. TFIDF vectorizer it has a lot of options, but to begin, we're going to set use IDF equals to false. That way we don't use the inverse document frequency. And then we also need to change norm equals to none. So this will actually turn it into what's called a count vectorizer. So if I say tfidf.fit transform, we'll give it the keywords. Then I say to array. This is what it looks like. It looks pretty weird, so, but that's what it is. So that is basically a multi-dimensional array. This is a matrix. If, if, you, if you didn't like squish it, it'd look like a table. That's exactly what it is. And notice that it's a table of counts. So let me give you a better view of what this is. pd.dataframe, the data is this stuff here. Then we're going to say the index equals the keywords. We're going to say the columns equals tfidf.get feature names. So this is what it really looks like. We have best, build, builder, building, campaign, campaigns, do, how. So yeah, so look, this is a keyword, right? Best software to group keywords. The word software appears one time. And the word two appears one time. That's what it does. It just does a count for how many times a word appears within this keyword phrase. Okay, now that we have that under our belt, let's remove this. We will use the inverse document frequency and the term frequency and create a weighted scheme, basically, of, of how frequent these words appear. And this is how we're converting our text to numbers, by the way. So then what we want to do, let me see here. I'm going to use that tokenizer equals to tokenizer. That's this function right here we talked about earlier. And then I also want to use the stop words. Stop words equals SW. Now, we're going to say X equals, and we pretty much just want to create that data frame again, just like that. 
There we go. So that's what we're going to call x. All right, so let's run this. Now let's take a look. Forget this warning, it has absolutely no meaning. Let's look at x. This is what x looks like. Notice that the words like to and do, those have been taken out of here. And that's because we're using stop words. That's also because we are, well, that, that's why those stop words aren't in there. And then the words like we saw up here, we saw build, builder, building. Let's see what they, we got build and builder, but we don't have building. So they were mapped back to their root word. So building became build, just like we see here. So now we have this text data converted into numbers. What can we do? We can say C equals cluster, and we'll just use the first algorithm. This is called affinity propagation. It doesn't do well with a whole bunch of keywords, but this will just give you an idea. Right now we're at 32 lines of code. So let's set that. Now we have this algorithm here called C. We can say dot fit predict. So we're going to create a prediction by clustering our keywords using this data here. And what are we going to pass into it? The X data. There we go. So we have a prediction. So zero, zero, zero. That means this keyword here got a zero, zero, and zero, meaning the algorithm thinks that these are similar. But then this had a one, this had a one, this had a one, this had a one, and then this had a zero, this had a one. So let's let's see, let's assign this. We're gonna say x pred for the prediction equals c dot fit predict, same thing. Now let's look at x. Now we have our prediction for each keyword. So that's kind of a high level overview of how you could actually build your own keyword clustering algorithm in roughly 30 lines of code. You don't even need the tokenizer necessarily. I just threw that in there to show you how to do it. Hopefully I didn't lose anyone. Hopefully you still stay subscribed because if this is too much, I'm gonna be posting a various level of difficulty videos. This might be really easy for some of you. This might be way beyond what some of you are capable of or even interested in. So if, if that's true, I'm, I apologize. But hopefully for the, for the people that wanna take it to the next level, this gives you a good idea of how to get started.